Welcome to Adobe Illustrator. This is Adobe Illustrator CS5 and we're going to take a little bit of time to check out the interface and figure out a little bit about how we start working in Illustrator. First, let me tell you that Illustrator has the same types of workspace management that other apps have in the Adobe Suite. All right up here at the top it says we're in the like Photoshop workspace. If I click this double little arrow here and you'll see that there are a lot of different kinds. You can switch it to show you like InDesign or you can switch it to Freehand which is another application not made by Adobe and you can also go into those that are custom for the Illustrator situation like typography or painting. I'm going to keep it on like Photoshop because I feel like that's going to be the one that um, most closely resembles what we've worked with in the past. Now you also have flyout menus that you can collapse and expand, collapse and expand. Um, let's see this one over here, uh, the tool one. Once you see if it's like this and you're getting something cut off, you just click that arrow and you get the two columns. Now just like in Photoshop, whenever you hover over one of these, you're going to get, you know, little uh, information about what that tool is, what it's called, and um, these little tool tips will pop up throughout the entire interface. If you click and hold, you'll be able to see that there are sub-tools below. And then there's this little thing out here on the right. It's called tear off. Watch what it does. I can pull that particular set of tools off and keep them loose from the other uh, tools and buttons. So if there's something that you work with a lot, let's say the pen tool in all these different um, versions, I like to tear that one off and then we can paste that up here. So uh, right now we don't have anything we're working on thus the top here is blank. If you were to make a new document, file new, we end up uh, with this new document window and there's a lot of stuff that you might not have understood or heard of before. Uh, the presets come uh, with it. Now you can do multiple pages because Adobe Illustrator is is mainly designed to be a print media but it does other things too. Uh, in this case if I click here in the new document profile the print group tells me that number of artboards one. An artboard is basically what gets printed out and it tells you how big it is. Letter, this is 8.5 by 11. Now I know it doesn't show 8.5 by 11 anywhere. That's because my units are actually in a different unit called points. If uh, you remember, you can have points in fonts, so like 10 point, 12 point font. Well, that's what this is about. This has got 612 points across. And that's old printmaking terms. Now, if I go to um, inches, it might be a little more obvious to you. It's 8.5 by 11. You can change your orientation here, right, to make it 11 by 8.5. Uh, that's really cool. And uh, bleed is just a little extra space so that the print can go off the edge of the paper and then you would cut it, trim it down to actual 8.5 by 11. And the default color mode is going to be CMYK. Remember, color mode CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and it stands for the colors that are used in inkjet printers. It's going to be at high level raster effects, 300 ppi, and the preview mode is default. So basically, I didn't really change anything here. All I did was change what I was viewing from points to inches. I'm going to change it back, leave it as it is, and click OK. Now, once we're in here, you can see that you have a, a tab view right here. And that tab view for having multiple documents open works just like Photoshop up at the top. You can easily access the bridge. And uh, this white area here, and then the other color area outside it, represents two different things. The artboard and this area out here is where you can just place things for use in your document. Note that anything out here gets cut off, doesn't print, if you will. If you want to change these uh, proportions, you can always go back to document setup and you're pre presented with the same type of information that you had before but in a slightly different way. You can change your units to inches here right and uh, you can put that bleed back in that we talked about in the first one. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel on this. 
Uh, you can do a lot of stuff inside the document setup, but I'm not going to mess with money of that those things right now. Um, let's introduce some of the area that we're working with. Now, I want you to understand that those tools that were kind of down the the row a little bit in Photoshop are the main tools in this program because Illustrator is a vector-based program, so all the vector tools are right here. If you use the pen tool, right, you can draw, click, 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 and you see how it's creating straight lines. Now you see that they're blue right now, but I want you to understand that this actually, uh, the, these paths that I've created have strokes on them. And if I were to click off using my black arrow tool and just click somewhere else, you'll see that there is a black line. Specifically, that black line is mentioned here. These are inform this is information about the current stroke and fill. The stroke is here and always has a square around it. It's also down here in your tools panel. Then you have your white fill and your white fill again. You can swap them. That won't do anything to this because I don't have it selected. Which is another important fact in Illustrator is that you click to select things. Notice it went back to how it was. That's because whenever you click on an object on the on the stage here, right? Anything that you have on your screen, when you click on it, it's got these blue rectangles around it. That means you are, have activated that one item, and it tells you what it is. This is a path, and this path has these parameters on it. If I were to enclose the path, it would have had a white fill. I'm going to change that to another fill, and you'll see you now have a path that's kind of crossing over and you don't really know how it closes. Let's take a look at that when I click off. Yeah, so the path goes up, down, over, and then it crosses over itself. You can always remove a path or a fill uh, color by simply choosing the none. Okay, so when I click the none, right, it gets you this big red line and the, the thing's gone. Now the neat thing about this is Let's say I click on this, and obviously it doesn't have uh, any color here. I can move it out here, and you'll see that it doesn't. If I go back and choose another another color, it will come back. So it's like everything always has a a path and a fill, or a stroke and a fill, but it um, it doesn't necessarily have to show it. If that makes any sense, uh, that happens in the appearance panel over here. You'll see that it's got the fill and the stroke always already listed. What I want you to do in this first little exercise is I want you to play around with drawing with the pen tool, creating some different strokes and paths on the stage. All right. So I'm gonna tap here, tap and this time I'm gonna hold so it curves, and I'm gonna tap and hold so it curves and around and around and around until I reach the beginning and you'll see that I have a little circle meant to close this path so I made this little shape here right I want you to be able to try and click off of it click on it onto it I want you to change your stroke color to a different color I want you to um, try a different size let's see if we can make it bigger to see how that works. So what I want you to do is see if you can create a simple design using just the paths from the pen tool. Now if you want you're allowed to add and subtract from this as well. So let's say I put it in the add anchor point mode. I can click right here and now I can use my white direct selection tool shortcut key is A to pull that out or in to create my shape. When you click on here you're going to see all your paths light up although none of them are selected right now. I'm going to use my subtraction pen tool, right? The delete anchor point tool and I'm going to delete that one I just made and it goes back. I want you to use your uh, white direct selection tool to see if you can adjust some of the paths after the fact. Remember that just like in Photoshop, when you move a path, you can 
change them like a seesaw. This is where the path is a smooth curve, right? But you can also make the path uh, anchor point have a uh, corner edge, and there's a couple different ways of doing that. The there's two different modes other than the smooth. So when I click this once, it becomes uh, like a straight point when I click and oops I clicked the just off of it and you see that it gave me a little arrow error saying that I um, wasn't really on an anchor point no big deal I'll click right on that anchor point and then I'll pull it out right and if I grab one of these handles out here I can then move that one in using that tool and the neat thing is because they're out like this it's really easy to switch around to those tools so what I want you to do is see if you can um, make some shapes. I just want you to kind of fill up your space using just the pen tool. And as you're working, I want you to see if you can work out maybe maybe a plan for a golf course. I don't know. You can do whatever you want. And that's it for this video.